Hey, good morning and welcome to Ham Radio with K0PIR, my YouTube channel. I really do appreciate all the likes, subscribes, and shares that I get. If you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button below. And when you see that little bell, click on the bell and you'll get a notification when I post new videos. This morning we're going to do a little troubleshooting with Windows 10 and the USB driver. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is just uninstall and reinstall the ICOM USB driver. So here goes. Okay, if you're having problems, and uh, a lot of them seem to be just no power output, sometimes all it requires is just uninstalling and reinstalling the USB driver. So that's what we're going to do this morning. And uh, this link is the PDF file for the uh, USB driver from ICOM or Silicon Labs and if you look under section 4 it shows you uninstalling the driver and I'm using Windows 10, Windows 10 Professional uh, it also has Windows 8.1 and Windows 7 uh, so you have your, your choice there but let me go back to Windows 10 and we're going to uninstall the driver right now I've got my radio turned on and uh, the cable's connected to the computer, so if I bring up Device Manager, we'll take a look and see it is COM4 and COM5. And if I bring up the apps, I'm going to go to Settings, and then over to Apps. It brings up all the applications, and if I scroll pretty far down, I'll see the uh, Silicon Laboratories driver, and right now I have 6.6.1 installed, and I put that on today. This is the older version. I put that on, so you might have this one. Uh, you might have another one, and uh, if you're having trouble, uh, let's just uninstall it and reinstall it. So what we want to do is, I'm going to go ahead right now and disconnect the cable from my computer. Okay, I disconnected the cable from the computer, and you'll see over in Device Manager it disappeared. But of course it's still showing up over here under Apps and Features. And if you just do a reinstallation, if you install over the driver, you'll end up with a couple of different packages over here. So the best thing to do is just uninstall it. So I'm going to click on uninstall. It goes to a blank screen. It asks me if I want a, uh, permission uh, to do that. Give the computer permission. I'm going to click yes. It's going to uninstall. And it disappears. So I don't have it under device manager. And I don't have it under the apps and features. Now the manual for ICOM says before you install the USB driver, make sure that your cable is not connected. If you're getting one of these radios and it's brand new to you, don't connect the USB cable before you install the driver. Always install the driver first. So let's uh, go over and find the driver. It's uh, version 1.3 is the latest version and uh, you can find it on the ICOM website. I'm going to click agree and it starts to install up here. I am using Firefox so it's downloading. I'm sorry not installing but downloading up here and this is it the latest one. I'm going to click on the little folder and it brings up another window and I'm right-handed. I'm going to right click and then go to extract all and just let it extract it to a folder and then I'm going to go to the driver folder and I'm Windows 10 I'm going to choose this one and Windows 10 Professional I'm going to choose this one and then I'm going to look for the 64 bit the 64 installer and double click on it Again, it asks me if I want to give it permission, and I do. I'm going to click Next. And there it is. It's ready to use. The drivers were successfully installed. Click Finish. One thing I might have forgotten to mention, whenever I uninstall, I restart my computer. And then when I install, I restart my computer. 
and for me it's just a matter I might have some programs open and I want to start fresh so I restart the computer to start fresh it's actually a good idea not to have any programs uh, running when you're installing these but uh, sometimes I forget and uh, let's just say I did a restart and once I restart I'm going to go and right now uh, reattach the USB cable to my computer okay so now I have the cable connected between the radio and the computer and if I go over to device manager it shows up the Silicon Labs uh, COM4 and COM5 I've got the ICOM 7610 so I get two COM ports if you're on the 7300 you'll just see one so that's okay uh, I'm going to be using COM4 that's my A port and I've got a video out on the 7610 and its virtual serial COM ports uh, have a look at that on YouTube so I'm going to be using COM4 and uh, let's try a program uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me before I do that let's take a look at the apps and features and see where it installed and this is it now I'm at version 10.1.2 so I did an upgrade I'm going to minimize both of these and let's try ham radio deluxe and we'll do a little troubleshooting here if you have your radio set up like mine and I've got some snapshot screenshots on my website www.k0pir.us if you have your radio set up like mine you don't want to have any of these checked so I'm using COM4 115.2 and then the CIV address is the default which is 98 I've got uh, these selected for auto start so it's going to bring up ham radio deluxe logbook and digital master let me go ahead and hit connect everything should come up and under digital master 780 I'm going to look right here and see if it's using the USB audio codec which it is and I have mine named I named it ICOM 7610 so everything's looking good there I'm going to go back to uh, the rig control and I'm going to set the power output it's already on zero let's see we're just going to test it and see if it's going to work I'm gonna go to a PSK frequency first I'm not putting out any out I don't have any output power but hit send and it's working now sometimes you won't get pushed to talk and the way that I have mine set up under program options under push to talk I'm using ham radio deluxe DM780 and must be connected to HRD so I'm gonna hit configure the HRD connection I can look over here and see I am connected to the radio but I'm gonna hit uh, configure that and this is the default I can hit connect and of course I'm connected and then I'm gonna hit save so if I'm not getting pushed to talk that's the first place I look now if I'm not getting any output first place I look is the sound card and the ICOM 7610 I've got I named it that but it's the USB audio codec for input and output if I'm not getting any output power I can click on this little box the three dots and bring up the sound properties and that would be the playback if I'm not getting any output the playback and the USB audio codec I'll double click on it and take a look at the levels and it should be anywhere from you know 25 to 75 percent depending on how you have other settings in your radio and the software uh, 20 28 so that's fine I think that's what mine's been normally it didn't change any with the update of the driver so that's one place to look and another place to look is the sound card over here 
if you don't see the sound card click on the little icon in the toolbar and mine is set to 50 percent so if you don't have any output those are a couple of places to look if you're not receiving anything you don't have a waterfall you want to take a look at the input click on that and bring it up again and that's under the recording tab the USB audio codec I'm gonna double click on it and go to the levels and if I have uh, too much noise in my waterfall didn't really increase it that much but you can see a difference if I have too much I want to back it back down and that looks pretty good but if you're not uh, getting anything in your waterfall that's a good place to look look at the uh, the input and then take a look at the level now uh, another person pointed out to me when Windows 10 did an update Windows 10 professional that uh, their, their radio wasn't working they, they weren't able to uh, I guess uh, receive or send and what they did was go over to the little window go underneath settings and we're not going to be under apps and features we want to go underneath privacy and then the microphone and allow apps to access your microphone make sure that that's turned on so that's another place you can look but if I'm having trouble and I'm not let me close out the M780 if I'm having trouble and I'm not able to connect one of the first places I go I look at device manager and make sure I'm using the right COM port and of course I want to make sure I'm using the right baud rate let me disconnect here when I go to connect I want to make sure I'm using the right baud rate and this is set in the radio in these ICOM 7300 and the 7610 the CIV I have unlinked from remote and the USB is set to 115.2 again if you have a look at my website you can see the screenshots uh, on my 7610 and the 7300 and how I have that set up now another program that a lot of people use is WSJTX and let me show you what I do when I have trouble with it I'm going to bring up my device manager and when I have trouble with WSJTX I always look and make sure that I'm using the right COM port and on the 7610 like I mentioned it's going to be COM4 for me it may be different for you probably is but we get two COM ports with the 7610 and again I have a article on my website and also a YouTube video explaining these virtual serial COM ports but I want to make sure that I'm using the right COM port so I'm going to open up WSJTX and I've been using the 7610 for the rig so let me show you what that looks like under file and settings under the radio tab the rig I have the ICOM 7610 now you may be using the 7300 and that's fine just make sure you're using the right COM port and the right baud rate now this baud rate is set in the radio and again on my website I have some snapshots of my radios and how they are set up so it's 115.2 under the CIV and it's unlinked from remote now under data bits stop bits handshake I, these can be set to default and it still works for me uh, RTS I can even have it set to low and it'll still work for me but I, I don't have anything set in there what's really important is the push to talk and I have cat and then under mode data packet and then under rig uh, split operation I'm using the rig right now and that's with the 7610 and uh, fake it works really good too at this point I should be able to hit test the cat and it turns green which it does and test push to talk it turns red now if I'm having trouble and I'm not getting uh, the green under test cat for me it's usually the COM port uh, my baud rate I, I never change and it won't change unless I go in there and do it I make but sometimes if you install the driver uninstall it reinstall it your COM port will be different than what it was before so make sure 
that your COM port is correct, your baud rate is correct, and the push to talk is cat. Hit the test cat and it should turn green. Now if you're not getting any power output, look at the audio tab and make sure the sound card, the input and the output is correct. Your output, your power is the output and it's the USB audio codec. Both are minor set to mono. Somebody else mentioned to me that they changed this and it worked for them. Uh, mine has been set to mono and I've, I've never changed that. So if you're not getting any output, make sure that these are set up correctly. And if you're still having trouble, you might want to try left or try right and uh, see what happens there. But mine has always worked this way. Another thing with the uh, Windows 10 update, and I was looking on another website, the resolution to their problem of transmitting or receiving was going into settings and then look under privacy and look under microphone and make sure the apps have access to the microphone make sure that that's enabled so that was an issue with the Windows 10 update so with these set properly I should be able to hit tune and I get uh, I have my RF power set to zero, but boy, the band looks busy, and uh, it uh, it puts out power for me. If I had the power turned up, I'd be able to put out 30 watts. So, uh, you know, that about does it for WSJTX. Uh, and again, it's usually the COM port or the USB audio codec is not set up properly. Uh, I can't think of really anything else in uh, in Windows 10. If you ever need to get to the sound properties, the speakers down here, I right click and I go to open sound settings. And then I, I take a look at the, uh, I scroll down and take a look at the sound uh, control panel, click on it, and it brings up this window and that's what I'm used to, the playback and the recording. The playback is your output, the recording is your input. So if I have too much noise over here and it looks like it's going up a little bit too high, I can double click on this, go to the uh, listener levels and uh, move that down just a shade. And I think it should be around 40 and 50. And that's about right. This sound bar over here should be around 40 to 50 when it's receiving. And there's some excellent information on the WSJTX website. There are also some great forums out there. If you belong to Facebook, look up the ICOM 7610 and uh, the ICOM 7300 Facebook pages. There are a lot of knowledgeable people there. You can ask a question and usually get a, a response the same day. The other forum that I go to is groups.io and again the 7610, 7300 forums, WSJTX forums are there. Lots of knowledgeable people and uh, you'll get an answer to your, your questions there too. So I appreciate you watching and if you have any questions or comments please make them below. I'll do my best to answer. Please visit my website www.k0pir.us. I have lots of articles on the ICOM 7610, the ICOM 7300, and I'm just starting to create articles on the Elecraft KX2. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Of course, tell your friends. 73 and good DX. Oh.